Welcome back. Our next guest is a comedian, actor, musician and author, best known for his roles in the cult sitcom Black Books as team captain on the anarchic music quiz, never mind the buzzcock, his appearances on the freewheeling panel show QI and his international stand-up tours. Is there nothing this man can't do? Absolutely not. And you'll no. be delighted to know that the one and only Bill Bailey is bringing his latest tour to Ireland. He joins us on the line from London to tell us all about it. But before we chat to him, let's take a look at him in action doing what he does best. Iceland, the country, took them to court to stop them using the name Iceland. <laughs> Who are these people coming out of Reykjavik Airport and standing there looking around going... Oh, no, 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 no. Where's my cod parcel in a cheese and chive sauce? <laughs> People are obsessed with this country, aren't they? They're obsessed with Britain. We love a bit of mischievousness. I was having dinner in France with three Brits. A waiter dropped a full tray of drinks, kajiz, like that. No one batted an eyelid. The four Brits, two a man, simultaneously. Hey! Loser! Back the finger! Oh dear, where Bill is my Bailey, cod parcel? Bill Bailey, I have to say, I'm a little bit starstruck talking to you now today because there's nothing you can't do. It's, it's getting a bit ridiculous at this stage. I remember the first time I encountered you was in Black Books, so you're a brilliant actor. <laughs> then I saw you in QI, you're hugely intelligent, and your stand-up yes. is hilarious. And then you won a glitter yes. ball, for God's sake. You're making the rest of us feel I inadequate. Know, I know. I, well, the dancing was it was it was very much uh, a turn up for me. I had no idea that was going to turn out the way it did. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, it turns out I can, you know, cut a rug. I, I honestly, it was a it was a huge revelation to me. I, I was um, uh, was a, a big surprise. And, but I also was in The Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> Were you the horse's head? <laughs> Bill, where? Yeah, I was the. Uh, I was the horse's head uh, <laughs> groomer. I, I was, my job was to smooth the horse's head before it went down. You did it? such a great job. You contributed so much to that movie. Listen, where are you, do you think, a uh, happiest, Bill? Where, where is your home? Is it on stage doing the stand-up? Is it with musical instruments? Is it, you know, on a film set? Where, where do you think you are your, at your happiest? I think uh, live, really. I mean, I think that live performance is something that I've... Um, I've been doing since I was a teenager, since I was yeah. 18 or 19. So I guess that's really the thing which is my natural habitat. Um, and uh, I love doing film and TV as well. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's great to mix it up a bit because in those kinds of scenarios, you're in, you're collaborating with other people, you're in a sort of group and it's, it's, the, so the pressure's off a little bit. So it's not just all about you and, you know, because stand up's quite a solitary thing. You know, you write it, perform it yourself and, being part of a team occasionally is great fun, but I guess really, yeah, my, my natural home is 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 live performance because I think there's something that is that you can't really match about live performance. It's, it's unique, and that's one of the things I think that you know in the in these last eighteen months were, that we've missed. I think it's some one of those things that people need. You know that that sense of communal entertainment, shared entertainment, that shared experience. Yeah, unfortunately, because of our, 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 our current restrictions, I know you've uh, shows in Dublin and Belfast that'll be postponed till April tomorrow. You're in the, yeah. the lovely people of Clarny will have the joy of your presence tomorrow evening. So you're flying in uh, to entertain them there. But when you're on stage and you're doing your stand up, and it's, it's, as you said, it's a very solitary endeavor. Um, being a comic and coming up with that material yourself, and is it a bit raw and very personal because it is just you and your audience and if it falls on its arse basically I mean it's just it's just <laughs> you and nobody else to blame for it yeah well that's right I mean there you, know, there you have it you know you have the sort of the, the the great highs of being you know in a in a situation where there's lots of people and you're you know the, the entertaining of all of them and you know you feel it, it's a it's a huge buzz but yeah, like equally, if it doesn't work, then it's all on you. So it's there is quite a lot of pressure to it. There's a lot of ups and downs with it. Um, and uh, I, I guess, but the thing is, I've been doing it this this long. I just uh, I I find there's nothing else that quite matches up to it. You know, when you're in front of a live audience, you know, you're bantering with a crowd, you're you know, you think up ideas, musical ideas that connect with people. It's a fantastic um, feeling and something we've missed, really. 
You mentioned the audience, Bill. I mean, the audience obviously play a huge part with any kind of live performance, but particularly with stand-up. Yeah. Um, does it make a huge difference to you? I know each show would be different because you're in a different city, but is there a difference to playing in Killarney, to playing in Bristol or Birmingham or any other cities <laughs> in the UK that begin with a B that I can't think of? <laughs> but do you know what I mean? It, it, does the audience make a huge difference to what the product is? Uh, the thing is, uh, I've got to say that over the years, um, generally speaking, performing in Ireland is quite different to anywhere else I've performed. <laughs> I hope that's in a good in way. way. Is that a good thing now, Bill? I'm getting way. kind of worried. No, no, in a good way. In a, in a good way. No, because uh, there's... I don't know what it is. There's uh, just an extra level of volume and uh, <laughs> of involvement that Irish audiences I get from. I don't know what it is. You know, I remember, I remember vividly I was playing at the uh, Olympia Theatre in Dublin yeah. a few years ago, and I was there for a week. And, uh, and a few of my crew had never been to Dublin before. They were just, you know, starting out. And they said, what are the crowds like? And I said, well, they're great. I said, they're really good. I said, you know, the weekends tend to be really, really much more lively. Maybe, you know, start of the week, it'll be great, but then it will sort of get more, the energy will go up. By Friday, Saturday, the place will be rocking. Anyway, Monday night, the entire audience <laughs> congered onto the stage, congered round my keyboard, congered <laughs> off the stage. I was leading the conquer. Yeah. We went up the aisle of the Olympia Theatre, into the Guinness bar, came out of the Guinness bar, back onto the stage, and the crew were all like this. <laughs> like, this is, this is Monday. I mean, yeah. what, what's that night going to be like? They'll turn so, the roof uh, off. Yeah, off. the Irish would never be described as shrinking violence, Bill. Sure they wouldn't. <laughs> no, uh... not. What was it like by Friday? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're not allowed to say that on live television. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was equally. I mean, it, it was righteous. It was great fun. When you're putting the show absolute... a new show together, Bill, where does where does it start? I mean, obviously, because what we're going, what the lucky people in Killarney will see tomorrow night that we'll see here in Dublin later in the year, is a new show. But it's it's been it's been you know guided by what's happened in the world over the last eighteen months. Where do you start with it with the blank page? Yes, well, I mean, it's a good point. I mean, a lot of the time, uh, it can be just a story, it can be an idea, a <clears> musical <throat> idea, one, you know, just a line, something that that you, you know, like in this particular show, I, I, was, I was looking at um, music that I loved playing when I was a kid, which was ragtime. And uh, when, I was, when I was learning the piano, when I was sort of eight years old, I was, I was, I watched the film. You know that it was around about the time of The Godfather, actually. The, um, the Entertainer. You know yeah. that um, the ragtime show from the film The Sting, and uh, and I loved this ragtime. And then I realised that actually, the last pandemic that happened, you know, the so-called Spanish flu, that was uh, that led to. Uh, well, it didn't lead to, but the the following decade was the so-called Roaring Twenties, mm. which was driven by music, by jazz. Mm. And the progenitor of jazz was ragtime. So then I sort of came to, I thought, well, what would be great if, you know, I can, if we, if that happens in the world now, you know what I mean? Like, I'm mm. trying to sort of see the positives in it because it's been so relentlessly grim these last couple of years. Mm. Uh, I, I sincerely, I wanted to be, to, to look to the positives and, and maybe that's what we're headed for. Yeah. Another roaring 20s, another sort of outburst of creativity and, uh, an Prohibition. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, why not? <laughs> like, Absolutely. Bill, I know you're, you're going to Killarney, <laughs> as we said. You've got Belfast and Dublin in April. But I have another suggestion for you now that I think this place you should visit when oh. you come to Ireland. I think you need to go to oh, Roscommon. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to show you why you need to go to Roscommon. Look at this picture okay. now. There has been discovered, flying around Roscommon, a, an Egyptian vulture, would you believe? Oh. And I know oh. you're a keen ornithologist, is that the right phrase? So there you go. Well, That's yes, what's flying absolutely. around the place. So you might give a trip up That's there fantastic. after your gig, isn't it? I'd love, I would love to go there, yes. I knew you'd appreciate like, that. He looks a bit confused, doesn't he? He looks like, what, <laughs> where the hell am I? <laughs> yeah. Where is the sand and the war? And he's supposed what, to be in Egypt and he's over in, in Roscommon. What am I doing on the Shannon <laughs> estuary, for God's sake? It's raining. Are there any in Roscommon? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Anyway, oh, I thought you'd appreciate it. I that think there was more. a nightclub in the 70s called Pyramids in Roscommon was somewhere. It? Oh, yeah, I'm sure there was, yeah. The Sphinx, <laughs> I think it was called. Listen, can we talk, can we talk about Strictly? Because I know it has Go so many fans around the world. And 
I know my five-year-old Lou is, is glued to the screen at home because he, 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 you're just his hero, oh. Bill and Oti. That's all I heard for weeks and weeks and weeks. Talk to us about oh. the experience, Bill, because you, obviously, you, you just jumped in and with both feet yeah. and, and went on yeah. to win it. It looks so joyous. It was. You're right. It was joyous. And uh, that's, the, that's the way I would describe it. Um, I mean, the thing is, I think a lot of people, uh, myself included, thought uh, I probably wouldn't be very good at it. And uh, I, I didn't think I'd be able to keep up. That would be the main thing. <laughs> and I thought I might be the, the sort of novelty uh, contestant. You know, the one, oh, the no. one where, you know, they, uh, week two and they're thinking, oh, Lord, what are we going to do with him? <laughs> I know. Well... We'll dress him up as a vole or something and fly him out of a cannon. <laughs> and shoot right. him out of a cannon. The, the Anne Widdicombe. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, exactly. And, and, you know, and I was thinking, well, OK, if it comes to that, Val, so be it. Anyway, and then there was something that happened in <clears> week <throat> two uh, where I was dancing the quick step. And there's a, sort of, there's a certain step. I don't know if, you, if you're up on your ballroom steps there, uh, you guys, but I don't know if you know the, the step, the scatter chassis. Oh, God, uh, yeah, one. yeah, yeah. You know the scatter? Yeah, no, yeah, no, it's no. not that. No, it's with the knees. <laughs> OK, OK. No. Great. I don't, it's, then. Uh... Come on, show us. <laughs> no, then. If that's the only one you know, then it's definitely not that. No, it's... Um, that it's, one? Uh, it's where you do, a, you do a triple step with the... You know, it's like... Anyway, the thing it is, works. Like, yes. was like... She suddenly looked at it and went, ah, oh, you can dance. do that. Whoa. Uh -oh. Suddenly it was like a sort of light bulb went off, like, well, you can do that. And so you went... It's very much like... She said, well, well, we'll do this and we'll try this. And then I just threw myself into it. And you went I, all I'm... the way to take the glitter ball. Bill, we it's could chat to you for ball. another hour. Listen, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Best of luck with the gig tomorrow night in Clarny. Can't wait to see you in Dublin. See you Thanks April. for joining us. <laughs> Lovely chatting Thank to you. Bill. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Now, you can catch Bill in the Glen Eagle INEC Arena in Killarney tomorrow night. Get your tickets. And in Dublin and Belfast in April. Tickets are available at ticketmaster.ie. Might just go to Roscommon. Now we're back with more Ireland AM after this break. <clears throat>